and welcome. My name is Katie Burke. I am the host and founder of the Modern Priestess Movement. Um, today, I am just thrilled to introduce my friend Layla Sad. Layla is a business coach. If you are an entrepreneur of any sort or starting your own practice or um, looking to build your own platform, this conversation is an essential, it is required watching. Um, Layla laid down some big truths when it came to being in our service, um, running our businesses as uh, holistic healers and seekers. Uh, I was just blown away and it was the only conversation that had me in tears as she was speaking and um, it was just incredibly healing for me to even be in conversation with her. So I'm just beyond excited for everyone to uh, see what she has to share. So without further ado, here's Layla. Hi, I am here with Layla Sad um, and Katie Burke, and we are uh, talking about the modern priestess movement today. Uh, Layla, we met, and um, so thank you for being here. I'm so excited thank to you. jump in. I almost just like, yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, we met in uh, Lizzie Swartz, who's also being interviewed, uh, in her uh, group, the Diana Society. And I was so excited to meet you. And we didn't even, I mean, I reached out to you and I was just like, will you be part of this? We, I just really liked your energy. And um, to me, you are a woman who is learning what it means to be a sovereign priestess. And I could see you in that process and it's so authentic. Um, so that's what I want to talk about today. But I'd love to just hear how was, um, oh, and I love how our first conversation unfolded. Do you want to share a little bit about that? It was yes. so instant. I felt it was, immediately connected to you. It was so fun. It was incredible. <laughs> um, thank you so much for inviting me to be here, You're Katie. So it was just, you know, everything that I have found in my business this year, things have happened through so much synchronicity without me having to push or try or hustle or force it. You know, everything has unfolded so beautifully. And, and us having this conversation here has been a huge part of that. So when you reached out to me and said, hi, will you be a part of this? I was like, Oh my God, I have to tell you something. <laughs> I know we've never had a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but you were in my dream like last week and it was a freaking incredible dream. And it was so freaky that I was, I just felt really shy to tell you because we've never had a conversation. Right. Um, and so in that dream, um, you were with me and uh, we were at some family function of mine. Um, We'd stepped outside of the house. There was, there were, there were men, young men that were going around and and having fun on motorbikes. And then they suddenly pulled out, you know, knives and guns, and it became very violent very quickly. And I tried to shield you from it to protect you because they were my family members. I have to say, none of my family members are like this. So it was a very bizarre <laughs> dream. <laughs> but um, I felt really responsible for you, and you were so small and tiny, and I was like, I have to take care of her. And I said, you know, come, come, come over here, don't step out, don't go over there. And you just stepped forward and suddenly channeled what I knew was this goddess Isis energy. Your whole energy body turned blue. You opened your mouth and this sound that I cannot even describe came out of your mouth. Um, and it shocked everyone. We all froze. We, we hadn't got a clue what was going on. You were just emanating this electric blue energy. Um, and you started speaking. Um, and I don't know what the words were, but I know that the message was for them to basically lay down their arms and that what they were doing was destroy, destroying themselves, you know, and that they shouldn't do that. And I was like cowering because I was like, what? Who is she? You know, where did she come from? What is this? Where did and she you come from? Yeah. And you turned to me and said, you know, don't be afraid. You're being initiated into the, the energy of ISIS. And, you know, you're not, don't, don't be afraid. This is, I know this is a lot for you, but don't be afraid. ISIS is here. Um, and I've never had a dream where a goddess has come into my dream. And I read about goddesses all the time, you know. Uh, I love playing around with the archetypes. Um, Isis has been someone who's coming forward very strongly. I've got actually my, I don't know if you can see, my Isis um, 
That's so mug cool. here. And it's so oh, funny because it's, it's not even mine. I, I'm at my parents' house and they just have it. Oh my gosh, that's great. <laughs> that's beautiful. And so, yeah, and so that was, you know, I felt really strongly connected to you from that dream. And I was like, when is, when is her website going to be live? And I just really need to connect with her. And then you reached out to me. It's perfect. Um, it yeah. was perfect. It yeah. It was really perfect. And as you, I remember like reading these messages and I was, I was, I was laughing out of, you know, when you just have these moments that are happening more and more now where it's yeah. unbelievable, but so believable. Yeah. You know? And so yeah. it was really, really touched me. Um, and I feel so honored that I could be this rep because it's really just a representation. You knew me. And yeah. so it was something in this like three dimensional reality that could be like a, a, a representative of a much bigger thing than what I am. But this ISIS yeah. center, who is my main uh, guide, is ISIS. Yeah. And so, uh, and she's come into my life full force this year. So yeah, get ready for that initiation with ISIS. It's quite, quite a ride, but it's exciting. And um, I think what you said is so important of don't be afraid of this power that women are starting. I think that they're starting to feel and remember how powerful that they are. Um, and it's coming up very naturally. Yeah. And I think it's coming up in these spurts like that where it's just such a rush. Um, so yeah, I would encourage anyone who's experiencing something like, don't be afraid. That's just, that's, I think that's kind of normal right now. Yes. Like, you know, uh, it is. My dreams have been getting crazier and crazier night after night, and I think that's the way that um, I think that's the way that this kind of energy that I'm able to let it through in my dreams because my conscious mind isn't there playing havoc. And so every dream for me is like going into this wonderland fairyland. I wake up and I'm like, I I don't know what happened. I was somewhere. I was somewhere else completely, yeah, you, you know? It's yeah. incredible, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm a yeah. big, I am a big fan of utilizing my dream time for, like, exploration and digging deeper and getting some symbolism. So that is something I, I personally ask for that every once in a while, like, before I go to sleep. Just, like, show me the, show me the, the lessons that are, or where I am or clarity here or, yeah, so that's, that's a really powerful uh, experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been doing that more, much more consciously now because my dreams have always been strange, always. Yeah. Um, and I just thought, well, I'm just, you know, I watch too much weird TV or whatever. I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah. But I've been, I've been getting the message that no, there is, there is wisdom here. You need to actually pay attention. And so I've been setting that att intention before I go to sleep each night. You yeah. Know? Show me, show me what I need to to see, and help me not be afraid of what. Right. I'm being shown. That's a big part. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to see, do you have anything that you'd like to share about being in the Diana Society that Lizzie is the founder of? I'm getting a lot out of that. So I just, I thought I'd ask, um, since you've come into this uh, society, what what has been unfolding for you? Yeah, so I, same, same as how I met you, I just uh, came across Lizzie through Instagram and she was just sharing, you know, really nice things. I felt really drawn to her. She, um, I think in her bio, talked about how she's a priestess of Artemis. And Artemis is a, um, and Diana, is a, is a goddess archetype that I feel very strongly connected to. And so I was immediately like, okay, soul sister here. Yeah. Um, and I had been following her, and she, she launched this Diana Society, and I was like, I don't have a clue what flower essences are. I don't really even know what we're going to be doing in here, but I just know I need to be there. Yeah. You know, I just, I just really know I need to be there. Um, and it's been it's such a beautiful container. It's such a beautiful space. Um, yeah. It's, you know, this year has been even more, I know that, I think this is the case for so many of us, even more spiritually transformational than any year I've ever had before. And I find myself opening up to um, new modalities, you know, new ways of seeing the world. And so being in that place and connecting with amazing women like you, using the flower essences, I can feel a much more gentle but deep transformation taking place and uh, yeah I absolutely love it so I've got I know you've got yours there I've got my 
Priestess yeah. of Diana. To- so I don't know if you can see this. If the light flower is- essences, yeah. yeah. I've got a little my support system right behind me. So I have like a statue mm-hmm. of Kuan Yin and my flower essences and a candle yeah. um, with a picture of my daughter. And so all of that's like right behind me here. So yeah, the uh, the so there's the container itself that Lizzie's created, but yeah, these flower essences. I- I've been working with them for over a year now. Um, mm-hmm. but I do remember when I first started taking them, I was like, Oh, these are real. These, yeah. you know, and it really surprised me because it, and since then I've just totally gone down a rabbit hole of working with vibrational medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's been really, really eye opening and empowering for me to start, yeah, to start working with some of those too. Definitely. Um, I haven't really worked, I've been, I started doing some energy work this year and that was my first time as well. I started working with a Reiki healer and those sessions have been incredible. Um, I work with her about once a, once a month um, and so I was like okay I know energy work works. It does actually work yes. you know it's not like woo woo crazy stuff it, it um, really works. Yeah. Um, but plant medicine hadn't been something that I had explored um, in this way yeah. and I think a major thing that has that for me has really sunk in is this role that we have as women as healers um, that we can use what is growing from the earth, what is in this you know, 3D dimension reality that we have to really heal ourselves and to really empower ourselves. Um, to me, that's incredible. You know, it's really, really incredible. And it does bring back magic. You know, it, it, it's, it feels like magic. You know, it really does. And, yeah. and I think about how in ancient traditions, you know, this is normal. I mean, I come from... My family has a background that is a mixture of Arab and African, and it's normal for them to use plants and and those kind of things as as medicine. But I'd always kind of thought, yeah, you know, they're just doing it, but it's not really doing anything. Um, That's such a good point. That's such a good point, because I do think a lot of us kind of remember those traditions, and it's like, well, they just did it because there was nothing else to do, and it's just always been done, and it's what you do. But, yeah, I think, well, I know, I know you're right, that it's like, no, they are actually creating these certain vibrations from the plants and yeah. using them for their, yeah, so it's, yeah, yeah, yeah so it's incredible and, and uh, you know, setting intentions, putting, putting your intention, your vibration into it to heal someone else, you know, that is something that I know my mother does a lot, like if she wants us to be well, she will tell us, you know, take this, we have this um, water in Islam that comes from Mecca, uh, it's called Zamzam water and it comes from a, a deep well in the ground there and we take it we pray over it we put our intentions into it and we yeah. drink it yeah. and I'm like we do that as well we're doing that with with plants and and with other things as well it's all one so yeah. it's interesting because I know that you had asked me you know what is your definition what is what does it mean to be a priestess to you mm-hmm. and I think I'm probably the only one in the group that is coming from a Muslim background and yeah. I'm a practice Muslim, you know, I cover my hair in my own way. Yeah. Um, but but I I do practice, you know. But at the same time, I really do feel when I heard the word priestess for the first time, I was like, that's me. I know that's me, you know. And I don't know why. I don't know what it means. I just know that's me. And mm-hmm. it, this year has been an incredible unfolding of discovering what that is and defining mm-hmm. what it is for me, yeah. you know, because I think. I think when I first came into this world, it was very much like, okay, if you're, you know, I was coming in with the old kind of masculine patriarchal way of if you're going to be called this, you need to do this, this, and this, and this, get these certifications, do these trainings, then you will be recognized as that. Um, and what I've realized is that, you know, women's journeys are about self-initiation. And yes. so I don't need someone to tell me you are a priestess. I don't need to go through a training to become a priestess. I know that I am one. Um, and I know that it can coexist along with all the other roles and definitions and everything else that are really important to me in my life. So, yeah, that's what being a priestess is to me. It's it's about self-initiation, writing your own journey, you know, just discovering for yourself, discovering what your own rules are. Um, and not trying to fit into a mold. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, mm. and and being brave enough to offer up your unique 
medicine. And so I would love for you to share with us, which by the way, thank you for that definition. That was actually, I read your definition and it was so beautiful that I was like, I need to ask her and get that also on (laughs) video. Um, So thank you for sharing that. This is really hit me in the heart. So thank you. Felt really good. Um, The medicine though, that we are here. So by initiating ourselves into priestesshood, I think part of that initiation is focusing and like really being disciplined about, okay, now where is my medicine? Like, what is it that I'm here to, and I really mean medicine as service, right? As this, uh, what do I offer that will help heal others? Which of course begins with healing ourselves. So if you're not sure what that is for anyone listening, you're like, I don't know what medicine I'm serving. Well, how are you healing yourself and how are you making yourself feel good? And then that kind of comes out and you can serve that to others. So Mm. I'm wondering what the medicine is that, that you are serving. Yeah, it's interesting because I actually have two websites and and they're different but the same. Um, And I think both of those for me are my medicine. So I have my LaylaSad.com website where I'm a business mentor for soulful women growing sacred businesses. And then I have Wild Mystic Woman, which is very much a community-based website, kind of like a virtual online temple. so Wild Mystic Woman for me is about that, what I was just talking about, defining what our own path is, discovering these new ways of being uh, spiritual by our own definitions, discovering our self-expression, discovering our feminine power. Um, you know, like I was saying, it doesn't have to be done a certain way, but when we can, when we can hear the stories of other women, how they've initiated themselves, how they've been healing themselves, it gives us ideas, right? It gives us options. Um, And I was having a lot of conversations last year with women who were um, of the Catholic faith, but also very much feeling like they didn't quite fit in there and they were being really drawn to discussions around the Divine Feminine and, you know, other metaphysical um, things, you know, having crystals around and, you know, plant medicine and all of that. And they didn't feel like they could have those conversations with people from their faith, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's very much how I felt as well, that if I talked about the things that I like to talk about, that I'll be judged as being, uh, go straying from the path, let's yeah. say. Yeah. And so I wanted to create a space where we were safe to do that, where we could hold both our traditions, the things that matter to us, and explore this new path of the women that we are becoming and reclaiming our stories. What a service. Yeah. And so it was very much about me. Like, I need this. I need this. Um, That was the heart space that was coming from. I need a place where I can express myself truthfully, where I'm not afraid to stand up and say, this is who I am. Um, I don't want to do it behind closed doors anymore. I want want it to be a place where we can do that. And I found that when we can share our voices, when we do it, other people feel comfortable doing it too. So we can come together and and that's why I wanted that place to be a community. So we have, we're ha- we'll be having um, guest writers writing there as well. It's not, it's not about me at all. <laughs> no, There's... it sounds like you, are, this is beautiful. You're creating the container. That's what right. it is. You know, it's not, yeah. it's not the, yeah, it's not about you. It's like, it's no. about the container of the, the mission. And that yeah. is legacy work, which is really what we're all here to do. It's like to create right. something that we can detach our person from so that if we had to hand it off to exactly. someone else, they could care for that community. So that's, so you're building a really beautiful container that's yeah. so modern. Because that, you know, this is, it's about bridging um, a lot of these, like, very rooted um, ancestral, like, uh, traditional, you know, things with some new information that yes, we all, yeah. want, you know, and bridging that. So how current and modern to yeah. have us of an offering. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and just, you know, in the literature, the blogs and everything that I was reading, uh, for women who are doing this kind of work, I wasn't seeing myself represented. I wasn't seeing sure, women yeah. who who didn't want to just forget about the traditional religious background that yes. they had come from. That that was still a really important part of who they were, mm-hmm. and they were also this. Yeah. So that that's what that is for me. And you know, in the future, one of my plans there is to to create 
women's circle. So I've never done it before, but again, it's something that I'm really feel, feeling called to do. Is I want to be having these conversations like we're having now, where it's like, ah, you know, I'm sharing my truth, you're sharing your truth. And we, we don't have to hold it all inside and pretend to be someone that we're not. So that's, yeah, so that's my medicine with Wild Mystic Woman. And then with and then, my yeah, coach, I want to ask you about the other website. Yeah, so my coaching business. So my, what I've come to realize is that entrepreneurship is a spiritual journey. Absolutely. <laughs> right? So, I, you know, I realized yeah. that pretty quickly. And I was like, shit, you know, it's not about the strategies. It's really not. Like, you could do any strategies and something will work. If you throw enough things against the wall, something will stick. Mm -hmm. But do you have the inner foundation? Do you ha are you doing your inner work? Um, yes. I've always seen entrepreneurship as this container. It's it's this cauldron that you come. You think that you're there to build this business, but as you're building this business, you're being built, you're yes. being transformed, you're being created. Um, oh every gosh. every new blog that you post, every new offering that you create and put out there into the world and hope hope people will buy it, that is also initiation. Um, and so my work is really about supporting, as I said, soulful women who are growing sacred businesses, who recognize that there is this whole other um, spiritual side to business, and they want both. They want strategy, but they want soul. They want to be led by their intuition and their creativity. They want their freedom right at the forefront. And they're also ambitious. They also want to go out and really impact a lot of people, but they're not willing to sacrifice their core values to be stuck into what I call cookie cutter business strategies, you know, that business has to be done a certain way. Yeah, totally. You know, it's, it doesn't have to be done a certain way. Um, each one of us is so unique. Our medicine is so unique. And you just have no idea how, like I said, you know, this year the opportunities that I've been getting completely not manufactured, completely like not orchestrated. You know, I, I wrote a, a blog post a few months ago which um, was just like, I just really feel like I need to write this. And it was about six-figure business coaches, and it just blew up. Yes. Yeah. And that, what, I'm linking it. Everybody needs to read that who's watching this. It was fucking brilliant. And I don't <laughs> swear like that a lot, but, like, that, that's how I, this is just connecting right now. <laughs> so you, you wrote mean? that. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> like, I love you too. <laughs> I shared that. I think before you were in the Diana Society. This is so fun. Yeah. I shared that, was, that article back in April. I think that was in April. Yeah, and and ever since then, you know, something that I said I want to write this because I was running a beta program and I was telling my clients it was all about positioning yourself. And I was telling my clients, you know, if you want to authentically position yourself, the content that you create has to be your truth. Yes. And you need to really stand for something. Like, what is it in your industry that just drives you crazy that you know there is a better way for it? You know, be willing to stand out and say something that matters to you. And I was like, I'm telling them this, and I haven't done that yet. So I need to do that. Yeah. And that blog post was, all it was was me saying I need to be in integrity with what I'm teaching. This is something I've been thinking for a long time. I think the, the people that I have on my very tiny list will be interested in it. Um, and literally overnight, people from all over oh, the I world shared were... <laughs> I shared it. I read that and I was like, this. Every, mm -hmm. Like, this is it. You were standing in your truth and you were saying something that I couldn't put words to and you did. And Thank you for writing that because it was really powerful for me. That was a step for me in the spring to step even more towards this oh. authentic. This is so beautiful. That makes me so happy. That makes me want to cry. Yeah, I totally know that article. And I yeah. shared it on my, and I think you caught, you were like, thanks for sharing. And I was like, thumbs up. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, keep doing you. And like, we oh. move on, right? And like, the, the new information yeah. keeps coming. But like, I didn't put that together with it. <laughs> you know that. Like, I... Yeah. Um, well, that that was, for me, was a huge, um, just like, 
just God just saying, here's a gift for you. Oh, and yes. now now you're going to go on a crazy roller coaster ride yes. because a lot of things happen after that. Um, but one of the hugest things that I will always be grateful for is it connected me with to so many different people who did who hadn't heard about my work, uh-huh. um, and it was something that it you know it wasn't what I wrote wasn't brand new. People had been saying it for a while, but for some reason it just oh, it, it just did. took off. I don't know what it was. You know, it, it was just me. divine timing. Because you were listening, you were you were that clear channel that we. It was the right moment, it was, and it's still the right moment for for women who are going to find that article. It's going to hit them in the heart like it did me, and that yeah. it really did give me permission to take one step towards more of my authentic. You know, because. I totally struggled with that. When I, it's going to be funny when, um, like, as I keep my blog, as it keeps evolving. If you go back to those very first posts, it was very much. I was really, I was thought the only way to do it was to hustle. Right. You know, that's what I thought. You know, okay, yeah, I made this decision to transition out of a nine to five type of steady paycheck type of career to work for myself and what I was being fed was well you have to do it this way in this right. formula so I really yeah. I you know I latched on to that for dear yeah. life because I had given up so much and I needed that structure or I yeah. thought that I did I didn't but I thought right. that I did right and um so by you writing that article, um, and obviously I will link it in the notes next to this video so everyone can read it, um, that is, uh, yeah, it really did. It helped me even break further away from that lie that I told myself when I got started, that it has to be this formula, it has to be the, by this program, and, and yeah. all of these things. So thank you for giving us permission to take our power back and run our businesses how we want to because that is a huge gift for the women who are listening to get out of thinking that you have to follow a formula. Yeah. It's not, you know, and maybe some of those will inspire certain processes, absolutely, but it's not as important to listening to what's in here. here. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so and that's you. that's the thing is that I realized so that's my medicine, you know, in that business is yeah. is through, you know, communication has always been a, a strength for me. Speaking, writing has always been a natural strength for me, but being able to say the truth, my truth, and yeah. hitting the right places in other people that you know we don't, we're not we didn't get into business because we wanted to follow someone else's formula. We got into business because. Freedom is important to us. Creativity is important Real to freedom. us. Integrity is important to us. Um, our, our uniqueness is important to us. And yet we come into this and we forget that because we are so passionate about our work and we want it to go out. You know, we, we, want, we want people to, to be helped and healed through our work. And so what I found over the last few months is while there is this huge transition now taking place where people are like, no, I'm not going to... I'm going to do that anymore. I'm going to trust myself. I'm going to trust, trust that things are going to wait, work out. Yeah. And so ever since that, that happened to me, I've realized, and I've seen it with my friends and colleagues as well, is that when we are in alignment, when we are in our truth, when we trust that whatever is supposed to be coming will come and we're doing our work, Whatever is supposed to come will come. You know, I wasn't looking to be in this series. I didn't even know it was happening. You know, I've been on yeah. my own priestess inner journey. It's been all about me. I haven't been like, I need to tell people I'm a priestess or anything like that. It's been all about me. And yet, because I've been in, so in alignment with my own values and my work, yeah, and your this just, it just, yeah. Your embodiment, which right. even speaks through your Facebook profile. That's, I mean, because that's how... I had only known you from, well, I thought, from yeah. the Diana Society, and and I just felt the authentic embodiment that you were, you know, so that is real. That is real, and that that is how a lot of these connections can start. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's just, it, there is that, there is truth to the to the energy that you're putting in to your work, not just the yeah. content, but the energy that go, and the intention and embodiment behind it. So, right. So, so when I work with you. clients and we're talking about, okay, I want to put this program out, you know, for me, I'll really explore why. What is it about this? What is it that you're actually trying to do? Um, mm-hmm. Are you doing it because you think you need to do it? Or is there something else that's really calling to you that you think maybe think won't work? 
but actually that's the thing that's going to work. And then when we look at launch strategies, you know, um, email marketing and all that, I'm like, you don't, you don't have to do what everyone else is doing. What feels right to you? What feels like a heart connection to you? Yeah. Write the emails the way you, you want to write them. Do the launch period the way that you want to do it. Um, trust that the people that are going to be drawn to your work are already in your sphere. Like they're already just waiting for you to open up and put it out there. And they're just like, hand, it, hand over. <laughs> Here's my money. I just need to work with you because, you know, same with Lizzie. You know, I wasn't on her email exactly. list. She's a beautiful example of this as well. Right? Yes. Wasn't on her email list at all, but absolutely just loved her, her energy on Instagram. Loved her embodiment and was like, I don't know what she does. I don't even get it. I just need to be with her. I need to be with her and the women that she's bringing together. Yeah, absolutely. I'm yeah. hearing this is really powerful. Uh, because it's so important for right now. And it's yes. so important. I can feel the women who are going to watch this and see you. And it's going to give them so much permission. And that is uh, what's really needed right now. We really need more of this permission to start doing our work authentically. Yeah. And so thank right. you for being thank brave you. enough to, um, to do it this way. Thank you for being brave enough to do it this way. So um, I'm incredibly touched because I, I, can't, I can feel the women um, accessing your energy and it's going to change them. It's, it really will. So thank you for being a part of this and tell us um, what your offerings are right now. Thank you. I, I, just, I just, thank you. I can feel, I can feel my heart and your heart just, I know. <laughs> you know, thank yeah. you so much. It's so beautiful. And to everyone that's, watching this, you know, I talk a lot about queen and sovereignty mm -hmm. a lot in my work. Um, I have for a long time. And, you know, just what you were saying about that embodiment piece, um, just trust yourself. Trust that you know what's best for you. Trust that the inner work that you're doing isn't separate from the business strategy. It is the business strategy. Um, and if you're in these circles, you, you know, say with that one more time, because that is so big to trust, say that one more time, trust that your inner strategy is the business, is that what you said? Yeah. Trust that your inner, inner work is your business strategy. That's it. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah that's we're, we're doing these meditations and taking the flower essences and, you know, adorning ourselves in crystals and praying and doing moon rituals and all of that. And, and that's for us, but it's also, it is also our business strategy. It's, when we are coming into our business strategy, okay, how do I want to proceed now? You know, we know that um, when we're in our divine feminine power, we want to flow, right? Yes. We want to be in this spiral circle energy. We want to go with our intuition. Um, we want there to be a lot of transparency, a lot of communion and sisterhood. And yet we go into our businesses and we're like, right, so I need to publish a, a newsletter every Thursday at 10 a.m. this time. And then I need to have an opt-in that's a three-part video series, you know, and then have X many um, uh, marketing emails and let people know that there's an early bird prize and there's a this part. And it's like, whoa, you know, why have you just split yourself in that way, you know? And if you were to bring that inner work that you're doing into your business strategy, how, would, how different would your business strategy look? You know, what tweaks might you make and it might be that they're the same by the way you know there's nothing yeah. wrong with those strategies that I've just said right but it's the energy that you're that you're doing them with yeah and the motive and what yeah, right where is that coming from absolutely this yeah. is so so it's been really wild for me to see um so I'll, I'll give a little context I sent everyone uh, a link to get on my calendar so I didn't really know like who was going to set the interviews on what days. It just kind of worked out the way that it did. And mm -hmm. um, then each day, you know, I, I didn't schedule them. You guys picked your own time slots. Of right. You've you had like a roster each day. Right. And it's been, yeah. it's been so interesting because just the last recording that I did is uh, Lori, uh, Lori Lumeria. I don't know if you follow her on Instagram, but I'll, she's brilliant. And we just had a very similar conversation about yeah. – um, and this has been a little bit of the theme today is bringing the, the spiritual work and the business 
are the same. They're not yeah. separate. It really yeah. is about bringing those two together. So if that's so, I would encourage if this is landing with everyone to watch that and review too, because we we kind of dig into that a little bit deeper. But it's so true right now, don't mm. you? I mean, you're seeing it all the time. I'm sure of that separation yeah. and where it needs to come together. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I used to stress out because I. Uh, freedom is like one of my highest core values and so this you know emailing newsletter on set day each week just felt stressful to me always yeah. um, and now I'm coming from a place of when I have something to say huh? I will say it yes. right and yes. that something to say has been because I've been on doing my inner processes I've been journeying and really processing and really uh, growing and from that growth that's what I'll share Whereas if I'm uh, banging out content each week because I'm being told that's the only way to build your list and to get more subscribers and all of that, I'm like, yeah, but the internet is such a busy place. Like, we don't need more content. We need more truth. We need more depth. Um, we need more con real connection. So if you, if, like, if you, if you're like, I just want to write once a month, or twice a month, do it, you know, do it, you know, it doesn't have to be, we, we make connections through so many other places than just through our email list, we connect to people on social media, on things that we post ourselves, and then the calls that we have, so trust that whatever you're putting out there, you know, the, those people, as long as you're embodied, you are doing your inner work, you're really digging into what is my sacred medicine, you're really trying to explore what your message is, and you're sharing it, it's not just like, held closely here you're actually sharing it in process yeah. people who are just like she's speaking my words she's she's my people yeah. they're just going to be drawn into you absolutely yeah absolutely i'm just going to tell you on a personal level i'm going to archive this interview for my <laughs> own personal <laughs> ego <laughs> like because I, I, I honestly, I, you know what, not, I think I maybe have reached the tipping point. I think I really have, but this is powerful. This is powerful. And, um, so yes, yes. Thank you. Thank I'm you. Glad. I'm glad. And this is my work with my clients. So if anyone is looking to, you know, working, there are different ways of working with coaches. You don't need to work with a coach who's like, you need to do this, 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 and I will hold you accountable and you should get it done. You know, I want to, when I work with a coach, I want to work, work with someone who walks right by my side mm -hmm. and says, yeah. let's do this together. Let's hold hands and walk this path together. And my job is to keep you true to yourself. That's yeah, it. That's it. Thank you, you know? for doing that. Thank that's you for it. doing that. You're, um, you are, you are a rev like, this is a revolution. This is a revolution, and I feel so honored to know you and to be connected to you. So thank you for for offering your very powerful, very relevant medicine that we, I think, um, it, I, I know, because I felt it, how many women are going to tune into this, and yeah, it's going to be big. Yeah, you're going to be hearing from some women. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be really <laughs> powerful. So, thank um, you. I know there you. are queens out there. We are all oh, out there. Yeah. We're all together. We all have something to share. So Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm honored. Thank you for your time. And I hope I know everyone is going to be checking out your website, getting on that newsletter, and exploring your offerings. It's very, very powerful work. So thank you for, for embodying it. Thank you yes. for embodying it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for reflecting that back to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs>